You fucking made a joke about freemium games. And you fucking made one. What the fuck is in your head, Matt Stone and Trey Parker? I have no fucking clue, but you sold yourself to the Canadian devil. I'm just so fucking tired of this fucking bullshit. Hey guys, I've been playing this game, South Park uh, Phone Destroyer, for quite a while now. That's why I haven't really been making videos lately. I'm going to try get through this relatively slowly, to be honest, because I don't really want to say crappy information to you guys like I don't want to skip information and uh kind of fuck myself over in the comments so I'll give it my best shot to describe the game first uh and then <laughs> go to why you would think I would recommend this game because I've been playing it since day one but man this game this game is a thousand percent pay to win people will say otherwise I say it's fucking a hundred percent pay to win and I'll tell you why. Oh, God. So you're first brought into the screen. Uh, you can see the dollars up the top, coins up the top. Let me let me bring you to that first, actually. So this is all the pay to win stuff. So first you have your cash, then you have your coins, then you have your card packs, and then your card packs are probably the ones that you want the most. There was a review that was done kind of recently actually, but let me let me go through the story first. So first of all, you get pulled into a South Park animation which looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's Cowboys versus Pirates, and then you're brought into this screen where you verse stages of the story and kind of getting through the cutscenes and all that good stuff. The gameplay works... It, well, the gameplay is fairly addicting, to be honest, because it's kind of tower defense -y, but movement, so you're kind of moving your characters around versus the enemy characters. Uh, so let me bring you to this stage here. So first stage usually is 1 out of 15, and then when you complete a stage, then it's 2 out of 15, 3 out of 15, 4 out of 15. Uh, the problem with that is 1 out of 15 is the easiest and 15 out of 15 is the hardest one and you can't go back stages so you can't kind of grind because it works off a card system so of course uh, when you beat a stage you can pretty much uh, let me get through an example so let me go through an easy stage so it's easier for me to get through 5 out of 15 should be alright for me so you can get these cards from card packs or of course doing the story mode dungeons. Story, you have pretty much unlimited stamina so that's really good. It's actually a boss fight here. So this is the gameplay here, Cyborg Kenny. Like I said, it's pretty addictive. There is legendary cards, common cards, rare cards and all that stuff. You guys know how card system games kind of work. But like I said, it's fairly tower defense -y. And the cards have levels. So you can see on the top here, my Cartman's like level one. And when I summon a Jimmy, it's level four, level four, and I'm versing like little level two characters. So you would need fairly high level characters to get through the harder end of the story, but that's not really much of the problem here. So let me try beat Kenny first. <laughs> Rats are pretty good because it, can kill characters relatively fast but they can be killed relatively easy as well um there is some sort of strategy to be involved picking the right cards for the right deck uh because you need some airborne units you need some assassin units you need some ranged units you need some healing units so that bit is the good part leveling up the cards is the shit part because you would need duplicates of cards Sorry if this doesn't make sense, by the way, but uh, if you actually see the game, then of course it would make a lot more sense. I'm really, really bad at describing things, as you know. But hopefully, getting through this stage will help you understand the gameplay aspect a little bit better. I almost defeated Kenny here. Like I said, this, this part is the fun part, where you're versing the story, but to get through the whole story i haven't finished the story but to get through the whole story is really really hard so this is the first part of the gambling gambling ex exploit i guess you can call it um so you can pick three lockers and of course there's best loot here so 
you would kind of want to get the best loot but some stages of course the loot is still shitty because it's kind of like a dice you can get really good loot or really shit loot and so you can pick three lockers so i got one of the better well i got some coins there and to unlock more lockers to try get more attempts to get the best loot you'd have to pay real money <sighs> gosh i hate explaining things but so first up is two bucks it's not really dollars but you guys know what i mean from looking at this getting this cash you can get in the game as well but it's really 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 hard to get cash in the game trust me you would get like 2 to 20 cash here and there but really really difficult so if you want to unlock one additional locker it's two it doubles i think it doubles to five actually not to four and then it goes to 10 20 if you want to unlock another one and then so if you didn't get the best loot and you really 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 want that card you would have to be spending so much more cash if it's if you're unlucky enough for it to be in the last locker that you unlock so that's one thing next thing is upgrade these cards so uh this to get to harder stages of the game i'm not talking about pvp just yet but you can kind of understand where pvp comes into control because other people have higher level cards you're trying to get higher level cards you're versing against them so the card level really 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 makes an impact in the game as well so to upgrade a card you need materials so these materials and to upgrade it even further you need to have duplicates of the card so you need it to level heidi up to the next level level four you need 50 heidi's um that's when you fully upgrade the card but it's really really tough you also need um gold as well but gold is really really hard to get as well but it's okay because if you want more gold you can buy it with real money It's just so so bad it and you know what you think these materials are pretty easy to get 12 feathers okay that's all right but these other like materials here they're pretty rare the little arrow thing and the star thing they're pretty rare and they're really hard to get off loot uh story mode best loot lockers but it's easier to get it off pvp there was a review this guy done actually they're bringing you into pvp so that's one bit of the aspect of the game pvp fights is the other bit so you get a free pvp pack which is fairly good if you beat three opponents three opponents and you also have a rank system so you'll reverse people around your rank there's also an event where you get materials to get more card packs as well, but you also need to beat the opponent as well. Like I said, I'm really trying to explain this well for you guys as well. So, how easy it is, is it to beat three opponents? Well, it can be pretty easy or pretty hard, depending what rank you are, what card levels the other person has because they might have um pretty good card levels there's a lot of hackers in the game i'm not explaining that though but it is freaking annoying but they are trying to get rid of hackers but i don't know man to defeat three people can be pretty hard like i've played this game for like i played pvp for an hour and i've made absolutely no progress to get that card back at one stage but let me go into battle I'm just going to battle anyway. You can refresh the card pack because once you get the card pack, you have to wait four hours to get another card pack. So, verse three people, beat three people, get the card pack, wait four hours, do the same thing to get another card pack. PvP card packs are one of the better... Well, it's actually the best way to get uh, duplicate cards plus new cards plus the materials. So that's the really shitty part. So this is how the PvP system works, and it's absolutely fucking broken. It's fucking broken. I'm, I'm going to lose on purpose here. So you may have trouble versing opponents, but it's okay, because a lot of people, 
exploit PvP so they lose on purpose, so they derank to verse easier people, and when they verse easier people, it's easier to get those three wins. Alright, so let me let me try and beat this guy. I'll, I'll try my best here. Maybe this guy's AFK. <laughs> so, you can kind of imagine here. Oh, he is AFK. This is like the first AFK battle I've been in. So, maybe we'll get really lucky and the guy will just be AFK. Oh my god. But he's, he's trying to do the same thing that I'm doing here. Trying to basically beat him. Exactly the same as story mode, as you can imagine. I admit the design is absolutely phenomenal. Like looking at these characters, man, it's really, really cool. That's kind of what brought me into the game. But this, these fucking microtransaction exploits is just so fucking sickening. All right. And like I said, there's common, rare, epic, and legendary cards. So. The chances of getting those cards are relatively low. I think they're like 1%, 1 to 5% each card pack. So there we go, locker system again. Getting some stuff, getting some materials. Not only that, you get PVP tickets to get more materials as well, so you can trade in those tickets to get more materials. Very, very sickening. God, what else? What else? Oh yeah. You get really, really into the events, so those materials that I just got, they contribute to the events. So we have the PC principal event where you need to um, pretty much get the sunglasses from those lockers that you saw. And it's really hard to get those sunglasses because again, there's only a chance to get them. So you need 650 sunglasses to get the last event reward, but along the way you get card packs. And you can get legendary cards, like I said, but you may get through the whole event, get all the card packs involved into the event, and not get any legendaries. And then you're like, oh man, I really, really want to get another card pack. Just to try get more duplicate cards to level them up, or to get a chance to get a legendary. Well, every day, there's a big offer. Big offer, another card pack. So you can spend real money to get another card pack. And in these card packs you also get materials as well. You get 30 neutral upgrade items in this card pack, but there are other... Oh god. It, it's just really, really annoying to describe this game because it's just so... Every bit of this game is microtransactions. Even the story mode, because you... Get into harder, harder stages of the story. You'll hit a brick wall in the process because you can't go back stages to get the best loot in those easier stages. So you have to keep going up, up, and up. Hit the brick wall. Then you have to do PvP to get more cards, get duplicate cards to level up your cards. Leveling up cards costs money. It costs coins. You may run out of coins. So you need to fucking grind even more. And so you... You can hit brick walls in all different directions, and then you're fucked. And then you have to spend real money. Let me go to this review, because this review sums a lot of it up. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but this third line here, to build up your deck, you need multiple, car multiple copies of the cards you want to level, plus resource cards, which are destroyed when leveling. That's great, but to earn these cards, you must play story mode levels or PvP matches. Or you can spend real dollars. I have to admit, the grind is really, really long. Like, to get, say, you saw leveling up Heidi, I need like 15 upgrade materials. To get 15 upgrade materials, you need to have really, really awesome luck in the best loot. Or grind like hell. Which is really, really disappointing. Anyway, to advance in story mode, you must win PvP matches. To win PvP matches, you must advance your deck. To advance your deck, you must get new cards. To get new cards, you must play story mode or win PvP matches or spend real money. See, so it's kind of like an endless loop. And there's basically three doors in that loop. And you can get closed off in all 
doors, so you have to spend money. The introduction of a draw in PvP means that's where you get used to blah blah blah. You just be able to eke out a win or drop rankings to find easier matches, like I mentioned. Uh, you know, spend three minutes to make no progress. Like I said, you could spend an hour, actually, not just four minutes. You can join a team where they can donate cards. Uh, I'm not going to really get into it because it's really, really pointless. Um, but you can get a guild where people will donate cards, but there is a limit to how many cards they will donate. And it's, as you imagine, people want to keep their own cards, but they'll donate, like, common cards and shit like that. Uh, da -da -da. Designers, designers are determined to make it impossible to compete or even progress for anything less than hundreds of your hard-earned dollars. Extremely disappointing to see a great game reduced to such pitiful, pitiful money-grubbing farce. I made a very, very similar comment to this. That's why I'm reading his comment because his one is a lot more detailed than mine. Uh, see if I can find mine. Actually, I doubt I can. It's four out of five, actually. So there we go. This is my comment. There are plenty of bugs. They actually fixed that. So story is awesome, which works on a grind system where you can grind and grind from materials and cards to upgrade your current arsenal. However, if you're going to hit a brick wall around level 40, that's level 40 in the story. Meanwhile, you get introduced to a PvP system where if you win three games, you get a card pack. However, however, by doing this, you rank up. Problem is both systems work on a rank up system where you can hit a brick wall in both which force you to spend real money on card packs to get ahead and they're just addressing the issue of they're not addressing an issue they're just like okay contact our support team i don't know how this game got four out of five i think a lot of people who rate this game they rate it when they first start up the game they they have a pop-up notification saying, rate this game now. So that's why it's, I imagine that's why it's such a high rating. But like I said, I've been playing this game for weeks now and it's just getting worse and worse how much I'm getting involved into this PVP system, which is absolutely broken. I really hope they change this system completely. Uh, even if you could down rank story mode um, levels, to get more, to make it easier for people to grind, that will be a thousand times more better. But no, then they're, they're not going to do that. <sighs> Hopefully, this gives you a little bit of insight to South Park Phone Destroyer. I thought the whole thing with microtransactions at the start of the game, like I said, they warn you with microtransactions. They say, "Do not play this game because of that." I thought they were joking. It's fucking real. Microtransactions in this game is just the worst thing ever. I'm really, really grateful to Record Keeper and all those games that make microtransactions at least fair. But this is just absolutely absurd. I, I still can't believe how many people are getting sucked into this game. It's just... It just makes me really sad where these games are just coming into people's lives and they're spending thousands of dollars for games like this it's just it really hurts me as a gamer it really really does and i hope you guys understand where i'm coming from in that sense as well you know guys this is my small review on south park phone destroyer why i don't like the game um like i said there are aspects that i do like but microtransactions has plagued this game just really really bad peace out guys